This painting on Earth as in the heavens is part of the Silent Empowerment series. Portion of the proceeds of my art is donated to University of Hawaii West Oahu Title IX for the awareness and prevention of domestic and sexual violence. This is a very important piece to me as it became the tipping point of what kind of genre I want my art to be. By ignoring all art rules, I was able to allow myself to express my fascination with mythology and philosophy. Uh, my personal imaginings of the chain of immortality, religious substitute, etc., etc. Almost all my paintings are event-driven, meaning when something extreme occurs in the world, I will either be inspired to start a painting or completely finish something that I have started but couldn't finish. Because I hardly sketch before I go onto the canvas, everything in this painting was done without any pre-notion nor direction. I already primed the canvas with the colors of mostly blue, but on the bottom I painted with a ton of gold. I had no idea where this was going. So I began with the female face. I want to thank my muse, Nicole Catherine Purely, a beautiful young woman from San Francisco whom I met only a few minutes while she was visiting here in Oahu. There was something about her that drew me to her, not just physically, but spiritually. I find out later that she is a design thinking instructor and an advocate for social impact and innovation. The universe clearly has a great way of placing the right people on our paths. At first I was trying to paint the moon or maybe some sort of celestial planet behind her, but as it progresses my brush strokes made it look like it was a portal instead of a round moon and I felt very frustrated so I left this section then I began to paint the flowers, lots of it. Maybe I'm getting carried away here, I say to myself. But this part is relaxing because I don't think very much. It becomes repetitive and you just go into a zone. Here, she is pensive, hopeful, floating to somewhere where I won't be able to reach her. It feels like a suspended animation. And so I finished this part, and then an awful thing happened. My mind went blank, similar to a writer's block. I don't know how to proceed, so I stared at it for a couple of weeks. Most of the time, I do not sketch before I paint, so I can't go back to any reference because I have none to refer to. When I was in my teens, I became an atheist for a few months just to test the rebellious side of me. Then that belief got very tiring as I dove into its narrower sense. Um, so I be went back to believing the reverence due to a god. The following weeks after my writer's block, I had more conversations with God. Why does he let people die from senseless killings? Why does he allow innocent children, women, and even men to be abused and violated by others? Does he fall asleep? And if he does, does he forget to send his angels to protect us? Then, on the night of October 1st, 2017, a man opened fire upon the crowd attending the Harvest Music Festival in Las Vegas, killing 58 people and bringing injury to almost a thousand. It was the deadliest mass shooting committed by an individual in the Western Hemisphere. This um, incident was too close of a call for me because my family live in Vegas. My sister, mother, and brothers are only minutes away from where the shooting happened. And just like everyone else, I was so stunned. 
and I began to feel the pain of all the families of the victims. And then the next day, I picked up my brush and started painting again. I remember not remembering the bottom part of the canvas became alive. Although I was in a daze, my, my heart was exploding. I wasn't trying to mix the right colors, nor thinking of composition or balance or whether this or that is super accurate or not. Um, I was just in the painting. Half of me was on earth. The other half of me was reaching into the heavens. Here is when my soul burns to think how human beings use religion as a tool to prejudice and violence. I use my fingers to paint the colors. This is a Muslim mosque. This is a sign of the cross. This is a Buddhist temple. Inside here, I walked into another portal to heaven. Away from all the conflicts in this world, Maybe this is my safe haven. On the bottom of the canvas, I covered it with whatever color my brush picked up. Here, there were lots of finger painting. I see many images surfacing here before my eyes from my smudges. I see a woman with very dark hair floating on the boat. The top left of the canvas is blank and I was going nowhere with this. Then I felt that there is something very primal in our nature and the sense of personal flight became relevant. She is flying and a bird has her wings. I really have no idea why I painted the bird. It could have been an angel. But when I finished and looked at it, it felt like it symbolizes spiritual freedom, a psychological liberation, as if it's saying, no fear, have no fear, have no fear. And then I looked back, am I really finished? I try not to think of what the viewer might think of me, or what style might it be that the critics would box me into. Is it surrealism? Is it symbolism? Is it expressionism or impressionism? All those isms make me dizzy. I try not to overthink. And so I'm finally finished. But I had no title until one day I was listening to Neil deGrasse Tyson. There's a chapter in his book, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. The chapter is called on earth as in the heavens. The chapter reads, Until Sir Isaac Newton wrote down the universal law of gravitation, nobody had a reason to presume that the laws of physics at home were the same as everywhere else in the universe. Earth had earthly things going on, and the heavens had heavenly things going on. According to Christian teachings of the day, God controlled the heavens, rendering them unknowable to our feeble mortal minds. Perhaps God and the universe are under no obligation to make sense to us. In the meantime, while here on earth, I shall continue to paint more flowers. And hopefully someday, I would really get to know what goes on in the heavens.